Hi everyone and welcome to our Getting Started training for instructors and today we're going to be going over how to get started with MindTab. My name is Alex Rainford. I'll be moderating the Q&A and chat today and I am the Associate Marketing Manager here at Cengage for MindTap and other digital platforms. We're joined today by Dr. Jenny Billings of Rowan Cabarrus Community College, who is an experienced MindTap user and is here to walk us through some of the ways that she uses MindTap in her course and how to get started in general. Hey everybody, so I am Jenny Billings. It's so nice to have you here. Um, so just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, there is a Q&A box provided to you. So if there are questions that you have for me or for Alex during the presentation, feel free to put those in the box. Um, while we may not get to them immediately in the webinar, we will definitely address as many as we can at the end. So feel free to do that. Um, and while we're getting started, if you could go ahead and introduce yourself, we'd really like to know um, who we have on and where you guys are representing. Um, so if you could give us your name, your school affiliation, and something that you're hoping to learn today. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about me. I've been with Cengage now for about five years, um, and I've been using Cengage products for about six years. Um, and honestly, when I first started uh, utilizing MindTap and all the different technologies and things like that, I knew it was a good thing and I knew that it was something that would benefit my students, but it wasn't very intuitive to me. And so I had to really sit with it and teach myself and learn all of the different processes and how to build my course and that kind of thing. And because of that, I've gotten really comfortable with it and have fallen madly in love with it. And so. That's why I'm here, is hopefully to do the same for you and to kind of take out some of those gray areas for you in hopes that this will help you prepare for your classes this fall. So we'll just give it a few minutes, let everybody get on and introduce themselves. Thanks, Jenny. It looks like we have people from Boston, Ball State, El Paso, Oklahoma State. Awesome. A lot of you new MindTap users, too, who are using it for the first okay. time in the fall, so that's exciting. Great. Yep, this is uh, perfect for you then. Definitely. A lot of people coming in from Texas, even some from Long Island. Okay. Awesome. We have a lot of great response in the chat. A lot of fully online classes as well. The people are going to be teaching with MindTap. Okay, great. More new users. That's great. First time MindTap user. Awesome. awesome. Some people were curious about uh, the updated dashboard and capabilities on editing dates and stuff like that. It's something that Jenny will definitely cover. Yep, we'll talk about that. A lot of people from California, South Carolina. Awesome. A lot of new MindTap users, so that's really okay. exciting. Good. Okay. Well, you guys okay. are definitely in the right place, so thank you so much for being here, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about, and Alex is actually going to take these slides, we're going to tell you a little bit about Cengage Unlimited, and the reason that's important is it's also rolling out this fall. So take it away. Thank you, Jenny. Just to quickly go over this before we get into MindTap, Cengage Unlimited is actually coming here in the next couple of weeks. It will be live in August, and it is a first-of-its-kind digital subscription for students that gives them total access to Cengage and Cengage's entire catalog and it will run them at $119 a semester, and of course they have year and two-year options as well. And if we go to the next slide, Jenny, this will go over some of the details of Cengage Unlimited, and it includes around 70 disciplines, 675 courses, 2,300 digital products, and that includes all of our different MindTap courses, as well as 19,800 eBooks. So with Cengage Unlimited, students have the option to purchase that one, $119 four-month subscription to get access to all of the content we have, including all of the MindTap content that Jenny will be showing you today. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Perfect. Guys. And with that, I will turn it over to Jenny Billings, who will walk us through MindTap. Thank you. So here is what we're going to cover today, and I'm really mindful of your time because I know it's summer and I know you're prepping for your classes, and good grief, we have a lot going on right now, don't we? Um, so I want to really go through these things, and it's going to be kind of an overview, and then if you need additional help or have questions, we can talk about that at the end, 
or you're also welcome to reach out to Alex or I for one-on-one -on -one feedback. Something else I want to make sure you guys are aware of um, is the um, higher ed community that Cengage provides. Um, you can actually get there through the Cengage website, but I am always there. You can post questions there and I can answer there as well. So we are going to talk about how to create a new course in MindTap, um, how to personalize your course. Like I said, I didn't really think it was intuitive at first, and I hear that a lot with people that contact me. So I'm going to try to make it intuitive and kind of explain the nuts and bolts and what you must remember. Um, I'm also going to give you some best practices and tips and tricks, the overview of analytics, um, how to get started for students, because that's equally important. Um, to help make sure they feel comfortable too. Um, some training resources that you may want to utilize um, after this webinar. And then of course, what to do if something goes wrong or if your students are emailing you and telling you they can't get in. So let's get started. So let's talk about creating a course first. So this is really where you begin the process. And you have two ways to do this as an instructor but there's also kind of a higher level master umbrella level too. So you can create a course directly in your learning management system if you are linking those two. So if you have inclusive access and if you are gonna have hyperlinks through your learning management system connecting the two. If that's not what you're doing, if you're gonna be sending your students out to Cengage, which is perfectly fine, um, then you would want to create your courses in Cengage.com. So the first thing you would want to do is log in to Cengage.com with your instructor email and password. And then from there, you would actually locate the text or the product that you're going to be utilizing. And there is a create your course option directly under that. And I will show you how to do that. But once you create your course, it's going to ask you just for a few items. It's really, really simple how to do this but you would give it a name first, and then you would tell it when the course is running, so start date to end date, and then you would do the time zone. Those are the only required bits of information, but of course you can add in your course dates and times, section number, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the thing that's really important about your start and end date, if this is a course specific for a section, you really wanna make sure that you're utilizing the dates of the semester because if you use the weekly view, so it aligns with your weeks. If you make it longer or shorter, it may show week 14 in MindTap, but you're actually on week 15 in your class or something like that. So just to prohibit some confusion on the student side and your side for that matter. Um, as you can see, there is the brand new course option, which is what you would utilize if you're brand new to MindTap. There's not a master shell on your institution side. No other instructors are utilizing it. You would just create a fresh new course, which means that everything in MindTap that's available is available to you and is showing. Um, however, if your department like mine has master courses that are built in MindTap that we can copy to other instructors, you do have that option too. Um, so if you wanted to copy from another instructor's course, you would need a course key for that. Um, or if you've taught in the past and want to roll that course forward and then edit it and make changes for this semester, you would choose the copy from my existing course option. So there are quite a few um, options here, but most of you are going to select create a new MyTap course. And I'm going to show you where that is um, in the MyTap, or actually in Singage itself. So um, let's talk about getting into Cengage. So I'm in Cengage.com. This is what it looks like. This is the banner I was telling you about earlier, the higher ed faculty community. This is another really great resource for you and a place to talk to me um, pretty much all the time uh, if you have questions. But what you'll want to do first is you'll want to locate um, your textbook here in the drop down menu if you've already added it to your bookshelf. But if you haven't yet, you can search here. Once your book or your product is loaded, you will scroll down and that's when you start seeing the options to create a course. And it's right here, this green button here. You click here. And then this is when it prompts you. And of course it kicked me out, but we'll sign back in real fast. 
this is where um, it's going to ask you to create a course and add in that information that we just went over. So I will show you. And so this is what you would do. So create a new course, continue, and then it will ask you for that information. And what's great about that is from this screen here, you can actually add additional instructors or TAs if you need to. And then I as a chair can actually create sections for my faculty and I can assign them to it later. So this is a really, really helpful thing. But once that course is created, then you can go into it also through the Cengage website and you can work on it, you can manage it, you can edit it. And so that's what I'm gonna show you here. So this is the course that I just created here in MindTap. And then I click on it and it will launch in a new screen and I now have my official MindTap course. And as you're about to notice, it will launch automatically onto the new dashboard. For those of you that are new users, this is your only dashboard. Congrats. Um, but for those of us that have used MindTaps before, um, this is a new dashboard for us. It's officially rolled out and the only option. So, all right, let's get back to the PowerPoint. <clears throat> All right, so now let's talk about kind of how to deal with personalizing your course and what to do with it there. And once I've created it, now what? This is really where I hear a lot of things about it not being intuitive and any help. <laughs> I hear this a lot. So the first thing that I want to point out here is this is a screenshot of the new dashboard. And there are two views that you will see um, in MindTap. There is a weekly view, which is designated by the calendar icon. And then there is a um, outline view or a list view that is basically designated by all of the folders and all of the activities and basically all the possibilities that are available here in your MindTap course. So you really need to decide kind of how your course is set up and what you prefer to see. I prefer to see all the content rather than it be designated by what I'm doing weekly or by deadline. Um, and that's simply because I like to jump around. I like to have my stuff, um, you know, kind of categorized by topic and genre rather than by week and date, but completely up to you. But you can change kind of how your students land in MindTap and what view that, you know, is kind of like their primary view. So as you can see, the primary view from my course is the outline view but you can set it where it would be the weekly view. And you do that by um, selecting your name up here in the top right hand corner. So let me show you how to do that actually in my tab. <clears throat> All right, so once you are in my tab, these are the two views that I was telling you about, right? So we're going to actually show you how to change that because I think it's important for you to really be able to personalize uh, what it looks like on your side too. All right, so if you want to do this, go to your name in the top right hand corner and then you're gonna go to course settings. All right, course settings shows you all of these different options here and with dashboard, you are able to enable the performance dashboard, which is what you see here with the class averages and percentages and things like that. And then you can also enable the rolling week view, which is what I just told you. You can have that week view come first. And then from here, you can decide what default or landing page your students see. So if you wanted to change that, you could unclick them or, and save the settings. If you wanted it to look a little different, you could do that. If you wanted to get rid of the week view, and just have the outline view, you could do that. <clears throat> and it will automatically refresh for you in order to show you what that new view looks like. So notice with that option, I only have one view, which is the outline, no longer the weekly view. Also things to um, remember when you're personalizing your course, the first thing you need to make sure is that you have edit mode on. This is the biggest hint, hint I can give you <laughs> up here at the front is edit mode has to be turned on because the default is for it to be turned off. Um, and with it turned off, that's really what the students see. Um, and that's the student view itself. 
So the edit mode is really how you view it as an instructor and also how you personalize your course. Um, other things that I want you um, to be aware of, the show hidden, um, what this is, is when you start personalizing your course and you realize, hey, I don't really want this folder, we're not going to use this chapter, you can start hiding individual folders, activities, chapters, you can reorder them. Um, but you can have this button clicked on to show even the things you hid in case you wish to bring them back to the forefront or make them relevant again or something like that. So I like to have both of those on so I can see the whole thing. So let's talk about how much you can personalize this. Well, a whole lot. Um, one, I've showed you an example here of how I can personalize this course so much that I can even change the title of the book. So before it was just showing Composing to Communicate, by Saba, first edition, but I can actually go in and I can name it whatever I like um, in order for it to have a more personal feel. So we do use this as an e-textbook for our Comp 1 classes, and so I like my students to be clear what book this is for, especially since we have so many electronic textbooks. All right, so you can also click on these little folders and you can expand each part or section or unit, however they're designated in your product. They may be a little different than what you're seeing here. That's okay. Um, but notice that as soon as you expand this, I can edit this, so you can edit the title of this as well, and you can hide it. So let's say that you've read through it and you're like, Ugh, my students don't need that. You can hide that section to your students. But to get it back is as easy as just clicking on show, and there it is again. Why would I ever want to rename something? Well, if you hide certain chapters and it's going to drive you crazy that, let's say there's 10 chapters and you've hidden six and seven, and so it's skipping, you know, one through five, and then it starts with eight, and that's going to drive you crazy, you could technically remove the chapter numbers from these little titles, or you could reorder them. But of course, when they click into the chapter, it'll still show that chapter number. So. Just be mindful of that. But if you're as OCD as I am, um, I like for everything to make sense from, you know, as soon as my students see it the first time. All right, so let's talk about like how we can personalize within chapters. You can do that too. Um, and this is called learning path. So anytime you talk to me in the community and I talk about, well, do you want it in your learning path or, you know, kind of what's your vision for your learning path? What I'm talking about is really this outline here. Um, of how you have things ordered and what you have hidden and shown, but it's also within the chapter itself. What path are your students taking while going through the chapter? It's not just reading anymore, folks. Um, MindTap has definitely done that for us. Um, in MindTap, you're going to want to be mindful, though, when you click um, and expand a chapter. As you can see, it'll have all these different things here, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going into the chapter itself. Like here are the learning objectives, here's a practice item. So you've got to be uh, a little bit uh, on your A game to make sure that you're actually clicking in to the right chapter for the reading portion. So I'm going to go into chapter one, the relevance of writing. And the way you know is it usually has a title right beside it and it's not marked as practice or something like that. That's how you know you're actually going into the chapter reading itself. So here I am, and it'll take you to kind of the outline page of the chapter, and these are hyperlinks that'll take, you know, you and your students to um, exact places in the chapter. And what I mean about personalizing this too, you can actually edit within the chapters as well. So you turn edit mode on here too. And as soon as you see these plus items, these are things or places that you can add things to. And there are inline activities um, that you can put directly into the book or directly into your outline. These can be within the chapter itself, outside of the chapter, in a folder, um, and really how you add things is really similar both places. Um, but within the chapter itself, you could add any of these activities that come directly here. So I could pull something directly from Google Drive that I have. Um, I could put in a YouTube video. I could put in an activity. There are quite a few things that you can add directly in the textbook. Um, you can actually remove things too. So if there's a minus sign, these are things that you can remove. If it's something that you really don't want your students to do, you can do that. And it will prompt you and ask you, are you sure you want to continue? And 
make sure that that is what you wish to do. <clears throat> Both you and your students also have a lot of other really cool features within the book. Um, they can make the font bigger or smaller. They can bookmark pages. They can have ReadSpeaker read to them, which has been wonderful with our ADA compliance team. And they can actually print pages too. So um, quite a few uh, things that they can do here that has been really, really helpful um, to their process and of course to their learning. So let's go back to this. <clears throat> All right, other things that I think you should know about. Let's see if it'll let me go to the chapter. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, other things that you need to personalize. So I've showed you how to personalize it within the chapter itself, but you can also do it directly here on the um, main page. And so again, make sure that edit mode is on, and then you would want to use this add and create button. So this is exactly what I just showed you in the chapter, but this is, for you know, kind of what's forward facing for your students. And also you can put it directly in folders or it will create an activity here at the bottom. So let's say that I wanted to create a new folder, no problem there. So you could name your folder there and determine what I want it to be associated with and what order I want it to be in on that front page. So as you can see, you can really personalize how this looks for both you and your students. Now, let's say you wanted to add something to a current folder. You could go to activity, choose what kind of activity you want. So let's pretend like I want to do a YouTube video. And then I'm going to search here for it. So let's say the writing process. And let's pretend like I just love this video, but I can preview it if I wish to. Let's say I like that one. I click continue. I can add text here before the video so students know why I want them to watch it. And then I can also add text after the video to tell them what to do with it or what to consider, or what activity that this corresponds to. Click continue. And then it becomes basically a mind tap item at this juncture where you can have a specific title for it dates that it's available, and then of course also where you wish for it to appear. And once you add that, as you can see, it adds it right here to the bottom. And as soon as it's added, you can hide it, you can share it, you can edit it, and you of course can remove it as well. All right, so let's go back. All right, so let's talk about batch edit. For those of you that have utilized MindTap before, this is probably like the best kept secret about the new dashboard because we used to have to go individually and change due dates or set due dates or hide things. And we now have batch editing capabilities. Are y'all fired up yet? Because I am, because it's awesome. And I'm going to show you how to use it. So the first thing that you need to be aware of here is it has to be in edit mode again in MindTap. Same thing that I just showed you. So that's kind of like the first thing you should check is am I in edit mode? Then you get to decide really how much you want to edit at once. Do you want to edit like just one folder? Do you want to edit like a whole unit? Do you want to edit maybe just a chapter and the things that are condensed into it? Or do you want to edit the whole screen? You get to decide. And so once you decide what to expand and what you're editing, this beautiful little orange banner appears down here at the bottom with batch actions that you can edit everything at once. So where this comes in handy, um, let's say that there are things that have due dates on it and you really don't want your course in MindTap to have due dates. Then you could batch edit and mark everything to practice or you could, you could remove due dates and have it all open. Um, that's where you would really want to batch edit something in my mind or if you're in a chapter and you want all of it due Friday, then you can select all of them at once and set one due date for all items. So let's, I'll show you how to do that actually in the course itself. All right, so um, in here we already have edit mode, so we've already talked about that. If you wanted to do the whole thing, you wanted to edit this whole page, you would expand all first. 
And notice that expands every folder, every chapter, everything's available here, right? So that would be the first thing that you would do. Now let's say that you wanna do, let's just do this here. Let's just do one part. And then we're gonna do just those activities. And of course it's acting wonky on me. Hold on, let me refresh something. <clears throat> All right, let's try this again. All right, so going into part one, and then let's say we wish to just batch edit that. So I turn my edit mode on. I wanna select all the items that are just in chapter one. So let's say I'm gonna do a due date change. You would go to batch actions, edit dates, and then I could put both the available date and the due date for all of those items in one place, okay? Let's say I wanted to do something different. So let's go to batch actions and let's edit all of their settings. So I can make all of these graded or all of these practice from one place, one screen. I can even set the point values for all of these in one option. So this is gonna save us so much time and has already made my life so much easier prepping classes for the fall. So this has been great. Um, the thing that you would really want to use this for, and I highly recommend this, with this capability of MindTap, you know, this fall, like really get used to it, work with it, personalize this course to something that you and your students love, and then when it's springtime and you're teaching the same course, you can copy this course over and then use batch actions in order to apply it to your spring due dates and make it applicable for your spring students. So, um, you know, this is a really great way to work efficiently and not harder. I know, shocking for us educators, isn't it? And for you to really feel like you've got a grasp on a course and you don't have to keep reinventing the wheel. So take advantage of this. All right. <clears throat> So let's go to the next thing that I want to share with you. So um, we've already talked about the, you know, how to put things directly into the chapter. So just a reminder, always make sure your edit mode is on, look for that little pencil, and then your plus signs are how you add any content in a folder, what they see on the dashboard, and of course also in the chapter itself. All right, so best practices. So we've already covered how to create a course. Cengage.com is your best place to create one. That's also your best place to manage and edit one because then you can copy from it in future semesters. We've already talked about how to personalize it. So you wanna use your name in the top right-hand corner to edit the dashboard and the viewing experience for you and your students but then you wanna utilize the edit mode and the plus symbols to add things and to cater to that experience that way. But what are some other things that just may make my life easier, right? Well, these things that are gonna make your life easier will also make your students' lives easier. So, man, we love those. So the first thing that I want to point out is that all full MindTap courses have things called app docs. So these app docs are on the right-hand side of your screen, and this is where all the apps that have come preloaded in your MindTap are. So these are basically things that improve the experience for your students, that add additional free resources because they're provided in MindTap, and these are also things that it pulls from when you're adding activities into MindTap. These are things that it's pulling activities from. So it may be something from See Now. I think y'all saw that. that. Those are little like grammar practices. Or it may be Athlea, also grammar or writing activities. But my app doc for my course, because I teach English, may be a little bit different um, than what your app doc looks like. And that's okay. Certain books come with certain apps. So um, definitely explore that and look at all the capabilities um, that you have. But I'll kind of go over, um, give you an overview of the ones that are provided in my side of the house. So if you do see similar ones, you'll know what to look for and what that means. All right, so 
let's talk about those. So over here, the first thing you're going to see is my content. So this is if you want to put something in Google Drive or Kaltura or OneDrive and you want to add it in to the learning path or to the chapter. These would be things that you cannot do without. You love them. You always teach with them. You want your students to have and you really want to show, you know, a true relationship between your content and Cengage content. All right, um, then from there, there is also my notes. Um, this is where students can create notes um, directly while they're in the MindTap course, and they can link it to an Evernote account, so they can take those with them. There is an RSS feed as well. Pathbrite is glorious, especially for um, courses that require things like portfolios and that you're wanting students to build things creatively and visually. Um, students can create portfolios directly in here and again take them with them through the Pathbrite account. There is a full book option um, for your students to have an ebook built directly into MindTap. So this version wouldn't include the activities, it would just be basically for reading and searching purposes. Um, Study Hub is one of the greatest things on earth. Um, this is a place that collects all of the notes and highlights that both you and your students do and create study guides from them. So you can create a study guide from all of the notes and highlights and it will also collect all of the bookmarks that they do. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Um, there's Read Speaker. This is what will read the book um, to you and your students and you can select the um, pace or the speed and then you can select male or female voice, even accents now, which is really cool. Um, then see now, that's an activity um, generator basically for my mind type. There are flashcards. Um, these are predetermined by the chapter, but students can also create their own, and so can you. So as a faculty member, if you create a card, it shares them with your students. Um, I have Applia in mind, which is grammar practice. There is a tutor available through these, and a lot of the students um, are getting tutoring through Chegg and things like that. I think y'all probably heard that in the news. There is a dictionary built in, a glossary. I have Questia, but, but again, not all of you will have that. That's research tools and um, a writing center. There's Connect Yard. This is a way that you can connect the MindTap course to students so they can determine how they get um, any type of messages or updates from you. It can even connect to their social media. So really depends on how, you know, comfortable you feel with that. And then last but not least, the progress app um, is pretty glorious. Um, and they can see how they're doing in the course. So can you. Um, there's also an analytics piece there as well. All right, so let's go back to the PowerPoint. <clears throat> All right, so there are two things that I want to show you how these work, and those are the two like main apps that I'd like to highlight. And that would be the system check, which is something that's built into MindTap to help your students feel um, really comfortable with the technology because things can happen all the time and browsers can cause an issue or it can log you off. And we don't want people to panic and we really want them to know how to be prepared and what that means. The other thing is I want to show you Study Hub that I just um, touched on a second ago. All right, <clears throat> so I'm going to go back into that course. <clears throat> so the first thing I want to show you is the system check. So again, you and your students would go up here to the top right hand corner where your name is. You would click on that. And when you would go down here to system check, what this does is it checks your computer to make sure everything is working well for MindTap. And as you can see, I got green arrows for everything. If there were an issue, it would tell you like in red how to fix it or it may direct you somewhere to get some help. But this has been a lifesaver um, for us and our students, especially with things like flash player and pop-up blockers. All right, now let's talk about Study Hub. Now, in order for me to really show you how, you know, wonderful it is, I really need to go into a chapter first. So I'm going to go into chapter four here. 
and I am going to go highlight something that I think would be important for my students to know. So let's say I'm teaching narrative essays and I want them to know what it addresses. So I selected the text and it gives me all of these highlight options. As a student, they can choose from yellow, pink, blue, or green. As a faculty member, if you're wanting to share your highlights with your students, you would select orange. And that will automatically save in Study Hub and also be visible to your students as well. I can also select text and I can add a note. So remember this for SA1. And I wish to share that with my students and then I save it. So as you can see, there's my post-it note. There's my highlights and all of that's provided. Now let's say this whole chapter is crazy important too. Then up here in the right hand corner, I can also bookmark the entire page. So I have a post-it note, I have highlights and I have a bookmark. And then I go here to study hub and all of these things have been collected in one place. So if I go to notes and highlights, there's my chapter four, there's the section I'm in then there's the highlight, which is awesome. There's the note as well. But if I wish to delete it, I'm like, ugh, students don't really need that. I can delete it here and it'll delete it in both places. Bookmarks are also visible and saved here. So students and you can go back to certain bookmarks um, that they feel they need to reread. And then once you do things like that, you can create study guides by the unit or chapter you can also do multiple units or chapters, but it would include keywords that are already provided in the book that are also in the glossary. And then of course it can include your notes and your highlights and your bookmarks as well. So this is pretty great. As faculty, we can create study guides and share those with students, or we can hide them um, while we're building them. Um, and then of course students could build ones for themselves, but we wouldn't necessarily be able to view their study guides. All right. All right, so let's um, keep on going here. The next thing that I want to talk about with you is the MindTap app. This is really, really important for your students that are on the go. If you're worried that they take public transportation or if they work full time and they really need their MindTap course in the book, with them, they can download the free MindTap mobile app through the App Store or through Google. Um, and so it is wonderful. Once they download it, they will log in with the exact same email and password that they created for Cengage to get into the account originally. And then they have access to all of these items. So they have activity reminders, they have due dates, they can look at keywords, they can read the entire chapters or listen to it with read speaker like we just went over, or they can look at the grade book through the progress app. Um, so they have all of these different capabilities. Then on top of that, they can also create notifications so they never miss an assignment or a deadline. They can check in for attendance if that's something that you enable. So once they are within a certain number of feet in your classroom, you can actually take attendance through the app. I know it's pretty awesome. I've done it. And then you can actually create and set up polls through the MindTap app as well. So what do we do for our students? Well, the greatest thing um, that you can do, of course, is to talk to them about it on day one. If you're fully online, we have resources that you can go ahead and post in your course. But I would encourage you to go ahead and send out this information to your students so they can start getting started. <laughs> Um, before the course begins. So what you'd want to do is you want to go to Cengage.com forward slash training. And once you go there, it's going to ask you what platform are you using? And once you select the MindTap platform, you will see a screen just like this, where you can even go as far as to choose, okay, I need to learn about MindTap on what learning management system. So you can select if it's Moodle or Blackboard, Brightspace, Canvas, and then from there, it filters even more resources specific to the instructor or the student or both. Um, so you can filter by the student. And as you can see, there are 24 things there now where there are user guides, there are PowerPoints, there are recordings of webinars like this. 
Um, there are future webinars that both instructors and students can log into. Um, there's a lot of resources there available. Um, but there are PDFs and things like that that are provided that you can put directly in your course. So if you feel really uncomfortable with MindTap and you certainly you know, feel uncomfortable telling your students about it, we can definitely hold your hand with that and help get your students started that first time. Especially with Cengage Unlimited and all the new changes coming, we understand that it, you will need some support in supporting your students and we're glad to do that. So what do I need to know about student registration? I promise it's not hard, I promise. Even if you're gonna have them go through the learning management system, even if you're gonna have them go through Cengage.com, um, it's a really easy one-time process. So the first time your students are prompted to sign into Cengage, they're gonna need to register for a new account. So they will create an account, they can utilize any email address they wish to use, personal or school, whatever they're gonna check the most often and remember, honestly. And there are gonna be two little check boxes that they have to agree to some terms and that they're, I think it's 18 years of age or older or something, I forget. But they will submit their information, they will see a success message across the top, and then it's gonna flash back and ask them to sign back in, just like this screen here on the left. Once they sign in that first time, um, if it's through the learning management system, it will sync the course in the learning management system with the, My, with the MyTap side, so they would only have to do that one time. If it's through Cengage, yes, they'll have to sign in each time, but um, it's a really easy process to have you know, the browser save their email address and password if possible, or to if they forget their password to reset it. Um, this is a really, really easy process. The reason we want them to attach an email address is so Cengage Unlimited and Cengage products can really follow the student wherever they go. So if they change institutions or something like that, they would still have access to their MyTap courses, to a digital locker that's coming with Cengage Unlimited, and then other things that they may purchase or gain access to. So we've talked a little bit about progress and that you, the instructor, have a lot of power to see how your students are doing in MindTap, and that's absolutely the case. Usually um, faculty tell me that, you know, this is something that they kind of use later once they get kind of familiar with the course and that kind of thing, and that's okay. Um, but the progress app looks a lot like this. So you'll see four tabs um, when you go in. And the first thing that you're gonna see is an overview. And the overview tab is really by assignment, how many of your students have submitted and what the running average score is. The analytics tab looks just like this on the right hand side, where it's just a very visual in your face way of showing you how your students are doing. And your students are represented by these little bubbles here. And these um, bubbles represent students um, in two different capacities. It's looking at how engaged they are by their average score, but also the time that they are in the course. So it's really looking at them from two different pla you know, places. So usually your high engagement folks are the ones that have been in the course the most and are the ones that have the, you know, the highest class average. But it really gives you a visual and even tells you, you know, how many students you have in each category so you know when to intervene you know, who to really look out for, that kind of thing. Then there's a gradebook tab, which is exactly what it sounds like. There are columns for every activity, and the ones that are graded, that you don't have as practice that are graded, will have an average score in the gradebook, which can, you know, be utilized um, for your own grading or could flow over into a learning management system if you're gonna create that kind of relationship. Um, ask your rep if that's something you're interested in doing. And then of course you can also create categories within the progress app as well. So, all right, so what do you do if something goes wrong? Well, it's your first semester. So let's first just get out of the way. Something wonky is gonna happen. There's gonna be a panic mode for you and your students. That is okay. My first semester was fall 2013 and it was a nightmare. That's okay, we all learn from it and it gets better and then it just gets, you know, this much, um, you know, wonderful <laughs> for your students and for you. So what you would wanna do is you would want to go to Check Check and I'm actually gonna take you there now. Um, Tech Check is this wonderful website that we can all utilize 
in order to one, make sure that, you know, everything's working well, but two, also to make sure that our students are not fibbing, that they couldn't get into MindTap and it was just simply because they didn't do it. So as you can see, all the platforms are here. You click into MindTap and it syncs and tells you if the platform is running efficiently. And all this green means everything is good to go, there are no issues, and then it even gives you a key if there's something wrong. And the thing I really like about it is even if there is an issue or you see red or orange or let's say, you know, there is a message that there, there is a problem, it will tell you what the problem is and when they expect it to be resolved. So that way you're not, you know, having to worry about that and you're not answering emails for the next 12 hours from students about it being up and running. You'll know what to communicate to them. So here are some additional help and resource items. So we've already talked about Cengage.com forward slash training. You can get resources for your course, for yourself, and for your students. Technical support is where you would submit a help desk ticket. Um, if there is something going on wonky in your class and you need some help or need somebody to look into it. And then the higher ed faculty community is what I've referenced twice now, I think, which is where you can get some ideas and help from faculty partners and other faculty like you. So we are at the end of my presentation. I have tried to be mindful of your time. I think I did pretty good. Um, so thank you so much for being here. So having said that, I'm going to welcome um, Alex back. And thank you so much, Jenny, for walking yeah, us through you. yeah, your MindTap course. I know everyone found that very helpful. And as, if anyone needs any other additional training resources, I have dropped the link in the chat for Cengage.com slash training slash MindTap. You will be getting a recording of this presentation and the presentation will be recorded and posted to the training slash MindTap website along with other great training resources. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everyone.